It says here, our traits are passed down according to our genetic code, according to a very specific set of rules first observed by Gregor Mendel. And in my opinion, that's a huge blow to evolution. Okay, uh, I don't understand how that could be a huge blow to evolution. That's uh, basically explaining how traits are passed on from generation to generation. So I don't see how this is a, a big win or a gotcha for the creationist side. In fact, I would say that the way that our genetic code works and the way that organisms propagate in general is not solved by the creationist model. They just draw a cloud in the sky and they write magic on it in order to explain everything. And that's never going to be more parsimonious than empirical evidence and just science in general. Ah, okay, I can't wait to hear this. Okay, so first, life has never been observed to come from non-life. Ever. While true, we haven't observed life coming from non-life, that doesn't mean that life can't just arise on its own from non-organic materials. See, the fundamental assumption here in this line of argumentation is that unless you can adhere to their straw man version of science, that automatically means that God is the best explanation. It's not. The prior probability of any God explanation surpassing any natural explanation is very very small. So small that it's negligible. So if I were to hedge my bets on which explanation will either eventually pan out or makes more sense even now, I'm going to put all of my chips on a natural explanation. Because the God explanation has never stood up to any natural explanation. But more importantly, like I said before, we don't have like the empirical evidence of life coming from non-life. But what we do have is a mountain of evidence that that shows that abiogenesis most likely did happen naturally. We have information that outlines the process, and it's really not that hard to fill in the gaps. So while it's true that we don't have any kind of experiment or evidence that life just spontaneously came into existence from non-organic materials, we have enough information in order to make a strong inference that a natural process like abiogenesis is most likely the best explanation. And just to put both of these quote-unquote competing ideas into perspective here, we have the scientific method on one hand that doesn't necessarily require direct evidence of what we're trying to prove, and then we've got this dude over here drawing a cloud and saying magic, and that's how his God did it. These two things are not the same. Second, to date, there is no known observable process by which new genetic information can be added to the genetic code of any organism. Well, that's just flat out fucking false. And I'm also going to need a citation on where you got this info. New genetic information is added all the time. As far as empirical evidence showing that mutations can add new information to the genetic code, we have evidence of increased genetic variety in a population, increased genetic material, novel genetic material, and novel genetically regulated abilities. Furthermore, the process of mutation and selection is observed to increase information in the genetic code in simulations. So I don't exactly understand what he's talking about when he says that there's no new genetic information that's added, because we often see major changes to the genome. Like for instance, with our own evolution, in chromosome 2 we see where there was a fusion between two different chromosomes. And I would say that that's a pretty big change right there. This is one piece of evidence that this is one piece of evidence that clues us into us sharing a common ancestor with the other great apes. Another way new genetic information can be inserted into an organism's uh, genetic code is endogenous retroviruses. We actually have a number of genetic sequences that can be traced back to endogenous retroviruses. Another way that new genetic information can be introduced to genetic code is through endogenous retroviruses. We even have some genetic sequences that can be traced back to endogenous retroviruses. This is also another way in which we've been able to connect our evolutionary lineage to the other great apes. So this whole idea that new genetic information through mutation or through any other process can't be introduced to the genetic code is just flat out fucking false. Without these Evolution's dead in the water. I mean, these aren't just side issues. These are imperative to evolutionary theory. True, changes in the genetic code are pretty integral to evolutionary theory. But again, 
Evolution is just the description of how organisms change over time. Mutations are just one particular way in which these organisms can change over time. There are other ways in which they can change. Like, for instance, another way is the endogenous retroviruses like I mentioned before. So again, this young man here is automatically assuming that because he's found some kind of app, probably the Genesis Apologetics app that they've got out there, that says that there's a problem with this and evolution, that means that there actually is a problem with it without actually checking the source material. This is a bad way to go through life. Don't be like this guy. If you can't get the evolutionary car started, you can't move it down the street. So, Professor... Is there any new evidence you have to answer these two points? First of all, this guy shouldn't be asking his either college professor or high school teacher to provide him with new evidence that refutes what he's saying because we already have the information that what he's saying is wrong. He's just regurgitating wrong information that's been given to him by in this case, Genesis Apologetics, or rather the Intelligent Design Crowd or Creationism Crowd, either one that you want to pick for this, they're all the same. But basically, he's just using shit that other people have pulled out of their ass and claim that evolution cannot answer or has not been answered in the scientific source material. It has been. Uh, let me check the science journals. I think that this is a wrong answer to give this student uh, from the teacher's position, uh, primarily because it makes it sound like, you know, you have to do the legwork for the student. The information's already out there, and if you're in a class that's directly related to evolution, then chances are the teacher or professor is going to know the source material that you need to consult. So obviously, Genesis Apologetics is strawmanning the teacher's position here. I mean, we expect this to happen because it's Genesis Apologetics, right? 